Um, so on, uh, unlike what um, Sarah was experiencing at Clyde Valley, um, uh, East Renfrewshire Council already had um, a CRM system in, in place and we were using Lagan um, and uh, due to PSN accreditations obviously we needed to uh, decommission Lagan and that's where we entered the process of um, getting a new CRM um, and we wanted to do a website and CRM um, together so we went with our supplier um, Goss and Andy's joining me on the call today. Um, so obviously all that all that procurement and stuff and everything that was actually done uh, before, I, before I joined um, the organisation and, and after I joined um, we, uh, they were still kind of mainly working on the website and things like that so unfortunately my, my knowledge of the full end-to-end -end process um, isn't there just because I haven't uh, I hadn't been on the full journey uh, with the council but I will answer any questions that come up uh, as we go as best as I can. Um, so the main objective behind our digital transformation is obviously the decommission of our legacy CRM system lagging, um, which I noted, and the, um, and the upgrade of our, our internet site. Um, the reasons why we wanted to do this, um, I'm sure as everybody wants to do the, the digital transformation, it's um, you know wanting to enhance our customers' online experience. We are all going to a digital age. Um, in order to um, increase our customer self-service ability, you know, to take the, the strain off of our customer service centre um, so they can focus on the people who, you know, really need that one-to-one -one, um, uh, level of service and anybody else can obviously uh, uh, apply online and, and do the, the mundane things um, online and, and get, you know, into the system much, much quicker. Um, we also wanted to reduce our end-to-end -end system architectures with all, you know, um, long-standing organisations, you know, and lots of uh, systems come in and just get placed on top of each other and, you know, get like purchased and procured kind of quite independently. Um, so we're really looking at wanting to obviously reduce our system architecture. That's for our own internal benefits and just for um, keeping everything much simpler. Um, and obviously the, um, a reduction in our process handling times in order to, re you know, the automation um, that um, these kind of low code solutions allow us to, um, to give um, means that, you know, we, there's, there's less um, handoffs and, and manual intervention in processes and where it's unnecessary, which means that our staff can actually focus on the times when it really does need that interaction. So um, what have we been delivering recently? Well, the main thing that we delivered naturally um, was our new website and this um, went live in July 2020. So you can imagine it was still a very tumultuous time um, and we managed to keep on track and, and delivered our website um, whilst you know getting used to the home working and things like that. So you can imagine those, those months um, between March and July um, were quite fraught and, and just having that kind of um, switch around the way that we work. Um, our website is obviously nice and clean and fresh and uh, completely um, different from our, from our previous uh, uh, website um, and using the, the new skins that um, Goss have provided. Um, and I just think it's much, much easier for customers to be able to, uh, you know, find what it is that they're looking for on our website and we're able to direct them. Um, and a lot of the work that we did obviously was um, a, a lift and drop from our, our previous website, but through the rest, you know, the digital customer experience program, as, as with all, um, it, it's continuous. It, it's, it's a never ending project um, and um, it's still something that is, is consistently under review. So as well as a new website, um, obviously during uh, um, the COVID time, we obviously had to deliver um, subsites as well. So we had a, a specific COVID-19 subsite um, that we this, we set up, but also our standard subsites um, that take um, take users away from the, the main website for our Work East Ren initiative um, and two of our um, kind of recreational areas within uh, the council, which are Dams to Darnley um, and our Rook and Glen uh, Park have their own uh, specific um, uh, websites, but we're still using the same um, infrastructure as our main website. We have delivered over 40 um, customer self-service forms and we've taken them off of our um, uh, previous online offering um, from that was that lagging. Um, and uh, they've been a mixture of um, just simple email only uh, forms. Um, the customer service forms have been across all council departments. So from um, HSCP, um, a simple requests of, uh, to, obviously to come in for like mental health services, which can just get fired off over to our, our colleagues in HSCP for them to have them in their system. 
Um, our educational school enrollment um, has now been brought onto the GOSS system. So from primary one, primary two, um, so nursery enrollment, primary one and uh, S1. Um, and our entire um, environment neighborhood service cleansing um, uh, services have also been um, brought online. Um, of those 40, I say um, most of them um, are kind of just kind of email only and just getting the information to the back offices that are needed. Um, but we do have 16 end to end GOS workflows that we've put in. So the whole entire process is managed within the GOS system. Um, and we also delivered, obviously, in, um, in that you know first few months when we're talking about the shielding requests and um, and um, other things, we've got nine COVID response forms that we're able to um, spin up pretty quickly, um, including also the economic development applications um, for for business grants. So what it looks like in the in the background, obviously, um, uh, a lot of the stuff that we've got is it's a big. Um, like look and feel change um, for our, our customer service officers. Um, and what we've created is um, a library of um, the forms that they may need when someone does um, come into us. Obviously, um, customers are, are getting a lot of these forms themselves via our website. Um, but where a customer does need to come uh, to us and speak with our customer service advisors, either say they've sent an email or uh, they're on the phone to us or they've come into one of our, our offices, um, that we have the form assist library. And um, that's there and you can see that obviously we've got the refinery results, the service areas to so our service um, customer service officers are really quickly able to find um, the form and that they need in order to assist the customer and they actually have the exactly the same view obviously of the form as, as the customer would have done. Um, and that's obviously supplemented as well um, by the, the knowledge base as well. So um, previously you obviously you used to have scripts in lagging that used to uh, support the customer service officers but the, the freshness um, and the ease and the, and the, and the kind of um, the ease of the questions that are now on the forms um, has vastly reduced the need for us to have like lagging scripts. You know that that lead a cost, uh, a leader customer service officer who needs to know everything about what's going on in the council. They can you know you know anything from HSCP to you know random um, environment questions and planning questions and things like that. So actually um, having um, much cleaner um, information and um, better questions on our forms. Um, that align to the GDS standards um, have allowed us to vastly reduce the amount of information that actually just needs to go into the knowledge base. Um, and we've also got that it all, as much as when we're reviewing our knowledge base, um, we've put as we've reviewed the content of our websites um, and so much more information is now on our website because we've said, well, if we need to know about it as a customer service advisor, why are we not telling the customer about it and things that they, they need to come to us beforehand? So um, that's, that's all helped um, with the, like, the customer expectation of what a process actually needs and looks like in order to be successfully delivered. Um, obviously, when new requests come through as well, um, they go into our back office and our back office team are really able to see, um, you know, the amount of claimable cases um, that come through um, and they're able to see some high level details about the case uh, before it comes in as um, like who it's come from and what they're asking for um, and if there's an SLA associated to the um, to the case. Um, and then each um, our customer our officer in, in, the, in our business support back office is able to claim that case and look after it for themselves. Um, but obviously the, the, um, the workflow as it comes into our CRM system, you know, accounts for people, you know, being off and um, either unexpectedly or, or whatnot. And so people can claim and unclaim cases um, so they're available to everybody um, to walk and can come back into, into the pot. Um, so how have we um, delivered what we've been working on? So along with the GOSS platform, um, it has allowed us to build fast and that aligns um, with, the, as I noted earlier, the Agile Scrum way that we've um, recently, well, I say recently, <laughs> two years have gone by, but it feels <laughs> that it hasn't. Um, and then the, the Scrum methodologies that we've been bringing in and working um, very closely with um, the digital customer experience team um, within East Grenfisher um, to, to bring in. Um, now, what that, that's allowed us to do is create like proof of concept forms and case management have been delivered very quickly within a sprint um, and, and we work within uh, two week sprints. Um, the, the tangible look and feel that it gives stakeholders when they're able to you know, review these forms and review the workflows really, really quickly and they're able to give us valuable feedback really quickly so we can change things that maybe aren't working for them. 
Um, and then the incremental um, form releases. So we haven't, you know, all these 16 workflows and, and 40 um, and, you know, for forms in total, we haven't just kind of landed them. We didn't build them all up and release them all in, in a, in a one-hour. We've actually been delivering those um, quite in regular um, iterations over the past, um, just like under a year, we kind of went and live with our first kind of major forms um, with case management um, around this time last year. Um, and what this does is the provision of the look and feel um, of the forms and the cases um, throughout the development um, with the stakeholders um, allows um, has allowed us like, within our sprint reviews that we hold every fortnight um, for someone to go, oh, that doesn't look quite right, that doesn't work really well. So as I'm kind of presenting what it currently looks like, we've got um, the, the you know the the, the technical or the non technical staff. Um, that I've been working on, on that form, like on the call with me and then changing it and, you know, and, and putting it up and going, well, does this look better? Um, and um, that allows that really fast feedback and um, that engagement uh, from the business within the change. So in, in overall, like the, the, um, the business areas that we've been working with, and that I said noted across the whole of the council, have been far more engaged um, in the change process, um, taking more ownership um, of the change and having a greater understanding of you know the, the, you know, the internal and external constraints that we're working um, towards. Um, and it gets them really excited and, and the acceptance of the change is much easier. Um, and the incremental releases as well allows has allowed the, uh, the concept of the new system to be introduced slowly and um, reducing like the negative elements of the acceptance change curve that um, can happen um, across um, a council or and any, any organisation when you're introducing a new system. Um, it's kind of allowed the word of mouth to get out um, and you know people actually are, are quite desperate like oh let me see it I want to work and it looks really smart um, and, and the feedback from the users has, has been really has been really encouraging in so much so that you know they're desperate for us to, to kind of uh, get back and um, uh, and, and work more with them. Um, I, as I noted earlier, obviously our, our focus at the moment is um, about the our, our um, transformation from our, our legacy system. Um, so it's all about just getting it across. Um, so we, we do obviously have um, aspirations for the continuous in, in, in improvements uh, as we go forward. Um, in, in terms of how um, we have delivered, um, obviously we've um, created a library of snippets um, that allow, um, like the, initially sometimes that will be um, will be created by um, our more technical staff, um, but can be created by by anybody. Um, and and what that's done is allowed us to kind of create a standard uh, reusable snippets for every part of the process flow. Um, these all reside in a, in a library. So what these do is allow us just um, like the building blocks of the code is obviously within these. Um, and that allows us to, to build forms really, really quickly. So we've got form logging, which allows us to get reporting on what's being used and how it's being used. Um, things like address snippets and things, all these things that are standard across all our forms. We don't have to build them every time. We just go to the library and bring in um, the, the building blocks that we've previously put together. Um, and, it, you know, occasionally they might need to get um, tweaked um, uh, for the specific uh, occasion that is being in use, but by and large, they are uh, as they as they come out of the library and, and into the form. And um, so that's and um, we've got so the payment snippets as well, and that's all from the form side, but with the, the snippets also work from the case management side as well. So additional forms and com uh, confirmation messages and creating a new case um, the data retention and a, um, a new customer portal that's um, just being uh, launched at the moment. All these um, uh, snippets have been created so that they're just there and, uh, and reusable, I say, for the, for the non-technical staff that we will be relying on um, to, to maintain and, and, and build new forms going forward. Um, so the benefits that we've been seeing by working in Agile Scrum and having GOSS um, as our development platform um, is that um, our, our neighbourhood um, processes managed end to end, and are like most councils, um, the like I think sixty percent of um, of the forms that we get kind of go into our environment department. It's one of our biggest areas, um, and we've been able to. Um, we used to have um, two systems, Lagi and Ameritech, um, and they uh, spoke to each other in some forms, but it wasn't great, and, and certainly it, the data flow was lagging into Ameritech and never Ameritech back to Lagin. Um, 
And what we've been able to do is obviously just re remove that completely. Um, so that's reducing our, our, our overall system architecture and the number of things that people have to log into um, as well. Um, it allows us to have much more improved visibility of the process um, for, for, K, for a staff member who's, um, who's look, work, look, uh, working on the case. But obviously, as well as we're uh, coming up to launching our customer portal, our customers are also going to benefit from being able to see where their um, processes are um, in, in the pipeline. You know, has it been picked up? Is it scheduled um, for collection? Um, you know, has there been a problem with it? Can it end, uh, also allows the customer to um, directly correspond um, with the case manager through the system and it's all logged and audited on the one case. Um, we've also been working really closely with GOS, providing feedback on the functionality of the dashboards um, that are, are provided as a standard from the, um, from the product. Um, and, and we're obviously making sure that all the, all the data aligns and things that are in order for us to really have valuable dashboards that provide really good um, delivery performance information. Um, so from our dashboards, we're able to uh, see the number of active cases, closed cases, um, how many um, of our uh, recent cases have been self-service versus um, needing um, our customer service assistant um, to assist them. Um, you know, are we meeting our SLA standards? Um, how many have breached? Um, all that really good information that, that's uh, available really quickly um, to um, to customers, um, uh, to, sorry, to our to our managers, and um, to be able to you know make good decisions about you know how they're deploying their staff and you know are there any pain points that they need to be taking a look at. Um, so we're really excited to be um, uh, getting to use the dashboards a little bit more. Um, uh, one of the main ones is our, our FOIs. Um, uh, processes we put live last year and we're really you know, getting to see the benefits of being able to see um, where we are with our freedom of information requests and um, and, and making that a much slicker process. Um, with, as well as um, with, the, with the two approaches of uh, Agile, Scrum and GOSS, um, we're able to um, quickly pivot from one solution to another in, in the event of um, you know, external blockers, which we know um, issues that we, we can't mitigate against. Um, recently, we had an issue with um, our payment provider um, within, our, within the test environment, and it, it meant that we weren't comfortable at going um, at, um, progressing. Um, with a, uh, an online book and pay system, um, just because we weren't able to do that, you know, that relevant uh, um, comfort level of testing you know, that we were chatting about earlier um, within uh, within the development team. So we're just able to very quickly go, okay, well, book and pay is not going to work for us just now. Um, let's really quickly spin up um, uh, just a, a form on its own. Um, to get the information that we need because we have to get off of lagging. We've actually only got a few weeks um, to go before, before our decommission date. Um, so literally, obviously, within our two-week sprint, we were we were working on the basis of a book and pay system um, for, for eight of those 10 days. Um, and then we were like, okay, we can't we can't move any uh, any further forward whilst this external blocker is, is still there and it didn't look like it was getting lifted anytime soon. And um, so we were able to just to spin up a form um, with everything that it needed um, within two days and still at the end of the sprint um, have a, a, a form that was um, demonstrated as uh, demonstrable um, to the stakeholders and still meeting the sprint goals that we um, expressed that we were going to aim for um, at the beginning of the sprint. The solution was different, but the user needs that were identified were still being met. Um, and also the whole GOSS community, uh, as well as there's many um, uh, councils uh, using uh, using GOSS um, and with the Slack channel that we have, um, you know, we're able to chat with um, other councils uh, regularly and um, we're able to share forms. So, you know, not every every council offers the same kind of services. Um, so we don't really, you know, like the idea of every council going off and, um, and building, um, you know, their own bespoke forms when there's probably things that are already out there that can be reused. Um, and we uh, specifically been uh, uh, consulting um, with our kind of neighbours, South Ayrshire Council, um, both on we've been chatting to them about complaints and the taxi license processes, um, just to make sure that are we aligned. We're doing the same thing. They shared us their forms. We've taken some ideas from them, um, and then that obviously is is payback from us as well. That we are the forms that we've built. You know, we make them available to to other people as well. 
Um, so what's next um, in, our, in our journey? Obviously, um, we have just uh, done a soft launch of a, a My East Ven customer portal. Um, so um, and we, we, that's going to have obviously wider promotion later this year. Um, and that's going to allow our customers to have a seamless um, customer experience between their My account um, their, and their citizen access uh, for council tax and their parents portal um, for their education needs um, and the um, national entitlement card um, scheme as well it's going to be showing you know the hot topic for every council the bin days that's what everybody wants to know about is, is when when's my bin getting collected or what bins do out this week because no one trusts the neighbor at the end of the street who's put out the brown bin first and go oh i don't know if it's actually that one this week um we're going to also obviously go back to the book and pay system and, and really start to expand that and um, to more services um, a, a lot of the things that um, come through our customer service center at the moment is because there's someone needs to pay for them and, and really enhancing and uh, widening our online pay uh, facility offering is something that we're, we're keen to do um, and so we've got a few of those in in the backlog um, and once we have done the um the, the, the main bulk of our work and what we've been working towards is um, the, the lag and decommission um, at the end of March. We're wanting to go back and obviously we look at every every process that we've looked at because it has just you know, as much as possible been at a lift and, and drop with, with minor improvements as we've gone along. But we want to go look at like a full um, redesign um, of our processes. Um, in order to continue the like some of the platform consolidation that we've been able to achieve in the last couple of years, um, and, and other integration opportunities, um, single uh, single views of the customer is something that we're really keen um, on and, and want to approach. Um, so yeah, so as we as we come to the end of, of the current phase of work, which has been um, uh, the main focus of our program, which is the lag and decommission. Um, this the the end to end uh, service redesign and, and the good work that we've done um initially introducing obviously change um, and the platform um opportunities um to the wider organization has actually really created a really good buzz um for change across um across the um different teams within the council um we're yielding some really positive feedback um from our users about how easy the GOS system is to use in comparison to the, the legacy system um and as such we've actually got a really healthy pipeline of projects um that we you know that people are knocking on our door to say we need this we like this i've really enjoy um working with this i think we could use it here and here um, and and that element of that that change coming um from and um, that desire for change coming from the business um it is excellent um and uh, allows them to see the opportunities that the change um will will bring them um so yeah definitely a big uh, a big healthy pipeline um of uh, continuous improvement opportunities that we've got um to overhaul um our services um, so I know obviously with Jack on the call and being a, a service designer, I think I'll definitely be in touch um, to, to grab some of your time. Um, but yeah, I suppose now just happy to take. Uh